This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on economic stimulus package under Atma Nirbhar Bharat 3.0. The participants are K. A. Badrinath, economic analyst, and Ruchika Chitravanshi, journalist. Good evening. Just two days before Diwali, Finance Minister yesterday announced stimulus package. It is the third stimulus package that has been announced. to aid the economic recovery in the country and to push the whole atmanirbhar bharat agenda of the government badrinath sir would you like to tell us a bit about the main schemes that have been announced the main features of the stimulus package that have been announced by the finance minister yesterday this is a very interesting way that the atmanirbhar bharat third tranche that has been unveiled by the finance minister has very interesting aspects to talk about the size of the package is at about 1.24 lakh crores there seems to be focus on revival of the rural economy and second part to the story is that the jobs creation seems to be another big focus area of the government which is trying to rev up the economy in the sense that bringing back demand into the economy after almost 6 to 7 months of virtually there is no activity or very little activity in the economy to getting it into the overdrive has been a big challenge and hence for this seems to be in the series of steps that have been announced one big issue is when the fertilizer sector seems to have got a huge chunk of the funds because this time the irrigation area has expanded in a big way making available fertilizer to the farmers will increase or will also help in reviving or contributing in a big way agricultural side to economic growth and subsidy that has been announced for the around 65000 crores has been set aside for additional spending in the agriculture sector essentially for fertilizer and another 10000 crores seems to have been put aside rural housing so these two aspects means that the government is looking at rural economy as an engine for bringing economic growth back into the system second part to the story is that the jobs that have been lost in a big way in the last few months seems to be the ones which is being targeted by the government so what is essentially saying is that if you even create five jobs and your company is hiring i mean has a strength of say about 50 to 100 people then perhaps you will get a job subsidy of about 24% of the pay in the form of contribution to the employees provident fund both the part the employee needs to pay as well as the employer's contribution will be borne by the government this is a huge step but it also has that it's a big risk that the government has taken in terms of paying up a huge wage bill on itself because in many of the companies which are registered with the EPFO will have to use these funds very very carefully the government will have to put its money the meager resources that it has and so this is a very interesting aspect to yesterday's atmanirbhar bharat third phase of the campaign that the government has announced yesterday the lead of workers also the government has agreed to bear two years share of the provident fund where is all of this team going to get funding is government going to raise funds or where is the money going to come from and what are the fiscal implications of this move fiscal implications are twofold one obviously if the government's tax revenues are not as per projection which would not have been in the last 6 months that we have seen because the gst collections have dwindled in a big way in the post covid situation or covid 19 hit the country or the world over beginning march so the revenue collections all over have gone down in a big way initially in the few months at least the first 3 to 4 months 
but some kind of a light on the horizon seems to be that gst collections have picked up in september october and even in november as these collections are going to be as per the projections made in the budget by the finance minister that means over 1 lakh crores every month gst collection is a healthy sign of economic recovery that seems to be on the way the second part is that even the personal income tax collection several other heads and other with revenue seems to be mobilized seems to be slowly getting back to what has been projected by the government but yes the government will have to borrow in addition to the 8 lakh crores that has budgeted in the march 1 when the budget was sent for this fiscal year during the atmanirbhar bharat campaign government has announced an additional borrowing of about 4.4 lakh crores to be precise that was announced around 12 lakh crores is what the government is going to borrow in this fiscal speaking about the fiscal implication well it's a very unusual year unless the government spearheads of spending the demand creation cannot be assured unless the demand creation assured revving up or bringing back economy on the even keel may not happen in a hurry hence for the government will have to take risk and have to spend more which it has been doing that about in the last few months that the government has announced its atmanirbhar bharat campaign around 29.87 lakh crores is what it has sought to spend so that more and more economic activity in the industrial side on as well as the service side happens in fact that has been sort of a common theme for all stimulus packages that were announced to spur the demand amongst people another step that was undertaken by the finance minister was in the real estate sector can you share with our listeners how are home buyers going to help from the steps that have now been taken real estate sector is a huge one which contributes to the economic activity because there is lot of excess capacities that are available in the market both on the residential housing as well as the commercial real estate properties which have not been sold in the last 6 months even before the covid-19 hit as in a big way there was already a lot of you know stress in the real estate sector where the excess supply of the housing units were available in urban pockets across the country and here now what the government has sought to do valuation of the deal will be lower by about 20% because of a tax exemption on buying of new units has been raised from 10 to 20% means virtually the tax implication for a person who is buying a unit will be less by 20% so much of tax saying will allow more money in the hands of the people who are going to buy a house flats and things like that secondly the prime minister in housing scheme that is there in the market has also been extended with the additional allocation of about 10 to 18000 crores so this will again demand in the market both urban rural as well as metros where there is a lot of unoccupied or unsold properties that are there in the market in fact government has also announced 1000 crore equity in the national investment and infrastructure fund that will help the debt financing by 2025 another important area is the distressed companies which has an issue even before covid started and more so now what is it that the government has done to help out the distressed sector this is for mostly for the stressed sectors which are almost 26 sectors have been identified by the government where the government would provide a guaranteed loan of 20% of the outstanding that is already there before march 1 of 2020 in the sense say if you have an outstanding of about 2 crores in doing some small business then what the government would do is 
I provide another 20 lakh so that uh, the business that has come to a standstill in the last three to six months can be you know, brought back. It will work as a working capital and the guarantees for the repayment of this loan is taken over by the government of India. In many cases, the interest subsidies are also available and henceforth, earlier when the government had announced this scheme, it was only for a few sectors and lending limit at which uh, you would uh, guarantee the loans repayment. But on both the criteria, the government has uh, relaxed this, the norms and it has reworked the scheme so that more and more small, medium and micro enterprises can avail this credit facility guaranteed loan of about 3 lakh crores which the government has had to disburse. And already, if I recall, at the yesterday's finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman's press conference, she did say that out of the 3 lakh crores, already 1.8 lakh crores has been disbursed in the last two months after the scheme was announced by her as part of the Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign phase one, when she had the unveiled package of about 11.02 lakh crores. So my guess is that the government is trying to revive the economy on different scales. One, provide enough cost-effective credit. Two, prevent defaults in the small businesses. And three, at the same time, see that demand for the products and services, especially for small and medium enterprises, is being created so that these goods and services that have been produced can be consumed immediately and exports are also picking, though in a very, very feeble way. But the issue here is the trade deficit may not be expanding beginning September or October. Henceforth, pre-COVID levels, we have whatever predictions have been made on the external trade front, may return after six months of the entire trade activity went for a swing. And now slowly the demand is coming up, even in the external trade sector. So a major theme seems to be to sort of increase demand rather than put cash in the hands of people, which is something we saw in the previous stimulus packages as well. So how do you think this will help in, you know, boosting the overall demand in the economy? The government has its limitations. And despite all the limitations that the government has with resources, Beginning with the Prime Minister's Garib Kalyana package, which was announced just uh, as soon as the COVID hit the world over, three packages that have been announced, and then uh, providing food grain support. All these measures, along with the Reserve Bank, which has decided to at least pump in about 12 lakh plus crores, all this, will, when you add this up, what the government is trying to perhaps do is one, bring economic activity back. And you would see that when you analyze the numbers in different sectors, barring the tourism, travel, and the hospitality industry, many of the sectors have started picking up again. And also, the festivities that are happening right now, that Diwali is going to be, is around the corner, maybe tomorrow and after. So, my guess is that perk up demand that was there in the last six months, that the demand that was not catered to is coming back into the market. For example, if you see the automobile sale, that is huge, that is happening. The agriculture products and services, which have been leading the way, both for domestic as well as the external sector, is completely a different story to talk about because uh, these are agriculture products which have been exported in the last few months that uh, has crossed more than 10 lakh crores. So this is very, very huge in terms of for India's agricultural basket. Thank you so much, Mr. Badrinath, for joining us today. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on economic stimulus package under Atma Nirbhar Bharat 3.0. 
The participants were K. A. Badrinath, economic analyst, and Ruchi Kachitravanshi, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.com. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.